In this animation, we're going to learn a bit about contracting systems. We'll get an overview of what contracting systems are and what they do. Now, in the modern world, we need contracting systems. A contracting system is there to provide a framework for individuals and businesses to enter into contracts. And what the contracting system does is essentially provide for the assignment of risks between the parties, in this case the buyer and the seller. Now there are a number of risks associated with any contract, but those risks tend to fall into one of two categories. The first category is problems with performance actual performance of the obligations that were agreed to in the contract. And these problems with performance can take different terms. For instance, there can be non-performance, a sales contract in which the seller never ships the goods to the buyer would be a problem with non-performance. On the other hand, you could have a buyer who refuses to pay for conforming goods, which would again be non-performance. Now another problem with performance that often arises is late performance, meaning a goods that were to be shipped in May are not shipped until October, or payment that was to be made in June was not made until September. Those are issues of late performance. Unacceptable performance relates to issues where the goods were shipped, but the goods were not conforming to the terms of the agreement. And therefore, although the contract was performed, it was unacceptable performance. There may even be problems with early performance. If a contract calls for the shipment of goods so that the goods arrive at the place of the uh, buyer in October, but instead the goods are shipped and arrive in August, that means that the buyer has to arrange for storage of those goods until November when it actually uh, needs the goods. So early performance can also be a problem in contracts. Now the other type of risks that we see associated with a contract have to do with unexpected conditions. And the first of these would be what's called in the law, acts of God, hurricanes, tornadoes, things that are outside of the control of men and therefore completely unexpected. Unexpected cost could be a problem with a contract. We could have uh, a, a contract made pursuant to the idea that oil costs $27 a barrel when in fact the price shoots up and the, and the oil is priced at $57 a barrel. There are unexpected costs there. Uh, diminished revenues. There could be less opportunity to sell the goods, which would then cause the seller to have a pe trouble paying for the goods. And finally, market forces in general could uh, react in such a way that the goal of the contract was rendered invalid. So these are the two types of problems that we find with in the buying and selling of goods. And contracting systems are there to provide for the assignment of risks associated with these two categories of problems. So a contract regulates risk distribution. And when I say risk distribution, what I'm talking about is that contracts can shift the burdens of risk between the parties. Now, the law holds that parties can contract with regard to any risk, even risks that they have no control over, however absurd or improbable. Two parties could essentially make a contract as to whether it will rain or not, and that would be valid. Furthermore, the parties can contract regarding a termination of the contract without either party having to perform. So a contract can provide for a situation in which neither party is obligated to perform the obligations of the contract. 
Now, a contracting system does three things. A contracting system must, first of all, provide the requirements of a valid contract. A contract is formed in any transaction in which one or both parties make a legally enforceable promise. Because that's what a contract is. It's an enforceable promise. Which means there are actually two elements to a contract. There is a promise in which one party promises to do something. I promise to do something. Purchase a car. Build a house. And then there's another exchange for that promise. I promise to pay. So contracts are the types of promises that the law will enforce. And what a contracting system does is establish the types of promises that we as a society have decided we should enforce. Remember, enforceability involves the application of state power to a private agreement. When I arrange to purchase a computer from you, and you fail to sell me the computer on time, what a contracting system allows me to do is to go to a court and have the court order you to sell me the computer or pay me damages for the failure to sell me the uh, computer. So a contracting system provides for what kinds of promises that the state will enforce on behalf of private parties. Now, a contracting system must do something else. It must provide guidance for the performance of a contract. The contracting system must provide rules as to when a party has performed according to the requirements of the contract. Which means the parties to a contract need to know with certainty what their obligations are and when those obligations are complete. So a contracting system lets us know about issues of performance and termination of a contract upon completion. And when a party fails to keep her promise under a contract, then we call that a breach. A breach means a failure to keep your promise under the contract, a failure to perform under the contract. And a contracting system will set out rules for what constitutes breach. Finally, the last thing that a contracting system must do is to provide remedies for the failure to perform a contract. The contracting system must provide a remedy for the breach of the contract. When a party fails to perform, the contracting system must provide a remedy to the non-breaching party. That's this remedy that gives the contract meaning. Meaning, if we have a remedy, then the party, the parties are encouraged to comply with the obligations of the contract. Now, a contracting system will spell out different remedies depending on the nature of the contract. So these remedies can take different forms. They could be the payment of damages, they could be the performance of obligations under the contract, or they could even be a combination of things. It all depends on the nature of the contract and the nature of the relief sought. So that's an overview of contracting systems, what they are and what they do. In this section of the course, we will study the contracting system known as the Convention on the International Sale of Goods.